Hello everybody, welcome once again to B&D Live, the Dungeons & Dragons live stream where a group of high school friends attempts to play Dungeons & Dragons remotely via the internet. With us as always, we have <laughs> Steven as Drawn the Fighter. Um, let me just fix that real quick, there we go, that's better. Uh, Tim as Vinny the Rogue and Aaron as Lily the Fighter. Nicole as to the Paladin may be joining us later, may not be, but I am ever faithful, Sean, DM, and this is b and Live. Recap here. Uh, the last time we talked with the Westleyville Wanderers, uh, you guys had just defeated some Remoraz, a pair of them, in fact, older and younger. Uh, unfortunately, the Acid Orb had ruined the teeth on the bigger one, uh, but you gathered what you could um, from both of them. And then you had a decision to make whether you head back to Thor, about a day and a half hike, or if you head toward Red Run, a bigger town known for its high quality iron. About four days hike west at the foothills of Mount T4. Um, you finished dividing up the meat and the teeth and decided to go to Red Run. First day was uneventful. Second day, as you were making your way along a narrow pass through the mountains, some big snowballs, giant boulder size uh, things of snow, almost knocked you off the trail, but you managed to stay on with Vinny's help and a burst breach. Brief burst of flight from Ostrid. That night, Drawn gets startled by some ice trolls, and a battle ensues. Um, you emerge victorious from the ice troll battle. Um, at one point, uh, when looking over the bodies, um, the headless body of one of them that uh, uh, Sir Pen had sort of uh, decapitated, uh, Vinny finds the heart of the ice troll and keeps it. But uh, I think only he knows about that. Uh, the next day, De Gaulle, Gorin keeps you going, and you travel down and finally into the foothills, uh, passing a mine that looks like it had once been used for iron mining. You eventually keep traveling, and around 1 p.m., you arrive at the village of Red Run. Uh, making your way inside, you get to a tavern just as you're about to enter. An older dwarf with white hair uh, gets ahead of you, a spoon in hand, and uh, kicks open the door and demands to uh, if there's a bunkle, uh, is what you hear. And that is where we will pick things up in the town of Red Run. So this dwarf sort of like forces her way into the tavern ahead of you. Um, what would you guys like to do? It does sound like Bunkle's in trouble. Um, Ostrid is going... What's that? That guy's shirtless. One of, them, one of the dwarves is shirtless, that's right. Do, do, we, do, do we wish to stand for this? <laughs> Wait, what? Do we want to stand for being shoved like, out of the way? Like, this guy just, just blowing past us. That's up to you. Well, I'm asking my... Well, I don't know. That dwarf looks... Can we tell the... Can we, can we take another look at that dwarf? The one who just went inside? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, she's, uh, she's a little older. She's, you know, reasonably dressed. Long white hair. Some kind of spoon in her hand. Lily is completely okay with a woman with a purpose. 
Uh, am I near Drom? Yeah, you are actually. You're, you're right next to him. I say, go get him, man. All right, I go in. Uh, Drom follows her in, and you see her heading toward a table in the back. Um, Ostrid, meanwhile, is talking to Sir Penn, um, and um, you notice sort of moves off down an alley. Um, so Sir Penn and actually Sir Penn's going to go with Ostrid. So they're off together. The Sir Penn and Ostrid adventure will happen later. Uh, Drum, what would you like to do? Uh, I guess I observe if she's going up to a table. I'm trying to figure out what her deal is before I decide if I'm going to ask her what her deal is. Okay. What's yeah, she. Drum is at least two, at least two of this woman, twice the height. Um, uh, she approaches this table where Drum, you notice there is a uh, somewhat sheepish-looking uh, man, a bit larger for a dwarf. And she says, "Well, what do you think you're doing? You had chores today, you know." And he's like, "Well." Well, I just, uh, you know, I heard that there was some going on and I just wanted to make sure that I knew all the latest news. And I've been hearing, and you know, some things have been going on on the Williamson's farm. That's important for us to know. We live vaguely close to them. And um, she doesn't seem to be buying this. And she sort of like grabs him by the ear and starts to lead him out. She sees you, Drum. I guess I don't want to... I not going to get in the way of this. <laughs> just, just step on the side. This seems to be a domestic dispute. She looks yes. up. What are you doing here? Why are you so tall? Why are you so small? She takes the spoon. She's like, I have half a mind. It sounds like it. <laughs> oh! oh! Uh, and then you hear her do an incantation. And you actually shoot straight up to the roof. Oh man! Um, <laughs> All right, we're gonna, <laughs> gonna do something. Uh, when I yeah. hit the roof, I thunderclap. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Are we rolling into initiative? Is that what's happening I, right I'm now? I'm not. I'm not intending to, but we'll see where this takes us. Um, you are in an enclosed inn. It is extremely loud. Although at this point, I think, what is it, five feet? I think she's more than five feet away from you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, the sound sort of rever reverberates off of every... Uh, and Lily and Gorin and Vinny, who are just outside the door, sort of like, boof, bursts open again as you hear this now familiar thunderclap noise. Uh, the old woman, she looks up, she, she's like, Whoa! That is unnecessary. That's she what waves, I was thinking. She waves her spoon again and you drop to the ground. Uh, if you want to try to land on your feet, you can give me an athletics or acrobatics check. Sure. It's uh, athletics. Go. Nine. Uh, yeah, I think you land on the ground. I was going to say ten, so. Just mm -hmm. barely. Uh, but you get, to, you, you get to your feet right away. And she's like... Look, uh, you're obviously not from around here. I'm Burma. And when my husband goes missing, I find him and I bring him back. Because he's got chores to do. Now, if you'd like to help him do your chore, do his chores, you're welcome to. I don't want to get in between, get between you and your husband. Hmm. You look a little familiar. Well, it's the first time I've been in these parts. Same with my friends. Keep it in the door. Safe. She looks around you. Let's go out and meet your friends. She goes out. Have you uh, have you traveled much? No, I I haven't actually. Um. A little bit around Torin, but um, hmm. no, I've mainly I've mainly been here in Red Run. Hmm. Well, I wonder if one of my kind has has been through before. 
Must be some of them. Uh, you folk don't mind the cold very much, so uh, traveling, traveling eastward to uh, to Lucknow. I just, I think I've seen some of your kind who uh, traders, perhaps, don't want to. Don't want to brave the bogs, and so uh, come through Torn. Hmm. Well, these are my friends. Hi. Hi. Listen to them. Hello. Yes, you uh, look like a ragtag. Wait a minute, Gorn. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Burma. What are you peddling? More of that ridiculous meat and teeth? The teeth have special properties. You should know that more than anyone. <sighs> well, I see you've got yourself a new gang, Gorin. Out hunting, I suppose? Well, we're actually been very successful. Took down some ice trolls just yesterday. Off playing with your friends. All right, Bunker, let's go. She starts to head out. Yeah, definitely. Definitely an interesting name. Go for it. It's very torn. <laughs> it's a family name. 22. 22, yeah. Now, you definitely remember um, back when you were with Twizzard more often, you know, spending time on the ship, hearing about ridiculous stories of him blowing up things and finding veins of silver for his uncle. You get a feeling that this Burma and Bunkle could be relatives of Twizzard. Excuse me, excuse me. Yes? Are you Uncle Bunkle? What? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm an uncle. You're an uncle. Are there any other Bunkles living here in Red Run? No, I'm the only Bunkle. Yeah, when one is enough. I am known by that name to some folks. Do I know you? Well, no, no, but I certainly know about you. Your, your nephew speaks of you very fondly, uh, that you taught him almost everything he knows. A Her. one Mr. Twizzard. Her, she sort of lights up. You know my Twizzard. Yeah, we've had quite a few adventures together from from um, all the way down in Windbell to around Tulu, up through, let's say, Swabia, across the lawn. Oh my. Corson. Yeah, we've been through a lot together. Wow, how is he doing? Well, last time we saw him, he was doing all right. I actually can say hi to him for you if you want. I heard he made a pyramid appear in a town. Is that true? And he did a backflip onto a ship. Is that what Vinny says? Yes, so... Um, uh, I, well, I just, you know, just heartening to know he's, uh, he's safe and, uh, sounds like he's met some friends and doing well for himself. That... That makes me feel good. Is he still, you know, how did he look? Did he look well kept, clean? How did he smell? Um, I, I had to be very close to him to tell that I was close to him. So not bad, but I think it's because he's getting some some good uh, influences from some of the other people that he's traveling with. They're they're a slightly more cleaner group, and he can do prestigation. So that was one of the first spells I taught him. I guess he didn't use it much growing up. Ah, uh, he could have used it more. That's a polite way of saying it. Well, if you're friends of Twizzards, then you're friends of ours. Would you like to come back to our house for a lunch? With the tutors. Here, here. Well, we can help. I thought no. you. A tour? Well, I can give you a tour, too. We're, um, 
Well, this is Tilly's. Um, she makes good food, but uh, lots of gossip here. But it's a good inn. One of the best in, in, tour, in Red Run, I'd say. But here, come on, follow me through. So you guys set off following Aunt Burma, as you now know her to be called. And she points out various stores. There's sort of a general store. There's uh, many different smiths. She sort of rattles off their names. Um, yes, well, we, uh, we uh, have mined some of the best, purest iron ore uh, that Centralia has ever seen. We're known for it, and our smiths are quite well respected. This is the home of Red Brown Iron, isn't it? It is indeed. You've heard of it. Or perhaps Twizzard told you. Do you, do you all know Twizzard? Oh, yes, we've done. We've, in South Gorson, we all battled together. Yes, that's right. We took down, we took down, like, the whole, like, bad government regime, whatever you wanted to call it at the time. I think you did most of that. My little Twizzard taking down an entire corrupt government. I think he just fireballed a whole bunch of guards, and that helped a lot. Then he killed the king, and he killed the uh, his consort, who was a dragon, and then he Wait. saved some people. On a boat I don't know if he did. He was in an ice cave. I, no, he, no, he wasn't. He didn't at the blow ice up cave. any of them either. <laughs> That's what I heard. He wasn't there in the ice cave. That was us, Vinny. Where am I? at the end. Uncle Bungle perks up at the sound of a fireball. He's like, he he was always really good with that fireball spell. Blew up a lot of stuff. He also likes a good dance macabre too. No, uh, no friend of Mayor Balin's. If he was here now, he'd probably blow something up of his. And he has a um, uh, well, a companion of sorts. Um, oh, my Twizzard has found love. Okay, okay. A nine foot tall Oni skeleton. A nine foot tall Oni skeleton. Yeah. Huh. Mr. Bones. Mr. Bones. Well, as long as my Twizzard is happy, then I am. Yeah, sometimes he rides around in his ribcage. In a matter of speaking. Well, I don't think he could fit his whole body in there, but he does try. The kids could fit in there. Mr. Bones will give rides to the kids. Well, oh, so Twizzard and his friend entertain children occasionally. Oh, well, usually just to get in the good graces of certain people. Hmm. All right, well, let's continue the tour. <laughs> Doesn't know how to quite parse all that. Um, so she leads you uh, out of the main uh, village a bit uh, into some, uh, there's some houses with some fields all covered in a uh, sparse uh, coating of snow. Um, the air is clear but brisk. Um, and she takes you to a house on a smaller plot of land and she's like, well, this is us and brings you over uh, and into the house itself. It's very warm. There's a fire crackling in the hearth. And, um, you know, not, uh, it's very modest, but, um, but quite nice, quite well appointed. Um, she says, well, when Bunkle will uh, we'll go get us some more firewood while we make ourselves comfortable. All right, yes, yes, I suppose it is my day. Um, so you guys sort of go around the table with her. There is a pot that's hanging near the fire, sort of keeping warm. And she goes over to it and uh, gets some wooden bowls off a shelf and starts ladling a, looks like a thick stew into the bowls. She brings it by. I do like to make a lot all at once, so I think I have enough for us all. 
After a while, Uncle Plunkle comes in, drops a stack of firewood by the fire, and takes a seat at the table as well. So what brings you folks to Red Run, then? You're not here for our iron. Gorn? Well, uh, I'll let them speak for themselves. All right. Where uh, Mr. Twizzard is right now. Oh, great, great. Is he, uh... I don't know. What is he? Uh, is he, is he, um... Does he use his magical powers? He's, oh, you've, you've overthrown governments. You've traveled all around Centralia. What, uh... What brings... What, what brings you back to Wesleyville? Oh. Uh, so the other part of our team, which is in Wesleyville right now, is trying to take care of that corruption by uh, moving it out to the best of their ability. Wizard discovered it. Yeah, he's fixing it. I don't believe I caught your name. You seem to like my my Twizzard very much. Ooh. I've heard amazing things about it. All true. They were mischievous buddies back in Did you also ride around in the giant skeleton's rib cage? Uh, I, I could, maybe I could fit in there, but it'd be a tight squeeze. Yeah, you thought. look quite a bit taller than my twizzard. Mm, yeah. and, uh, what about you? You're you're quite tall yourself. She looks at Drum. Yes, I definitely could not fit in uh, the skeleton's rib cage. Mm. And you have some sort of arcane ability yourself there, a little. I. Yes. Not quite, uh, hmm. not quite I, sure of yourself. I, well, I, I've, um, it's something I kind of discovered some years ago, and it's, it's been, um, it's been a journey, both in terms of sort of trying to understand what this is, as well as, uh, just physically journeying to try to understand what this is. Um, and, uh, Yes. Have you have you studied the arcane arts uh, formally? Have you I, had a teacher? I have, I have never had a teacher. I have um, I've just sort of picked things up along the way. Sometimes hmm. uh, sometimes it even surprises me. Well, perhaps you could use a teacher. What uh, do you know one? I am one. You have, you are one. I taught Twizzard everything he knows about the arcane arts. At least until he left. Uh, hmm. Perhaps he's learned a few things since then. I don't know about this raising things from the dead bit. I'm not sure I ever taught him that. Guys, how how long are we staying in Red Run? Uh, it's time for you to pick up a miner. <laughs> pick up a miner in in arcane in arcaneology. <laughs> well, well, um, yeah. I mean, I I would love anything that you can uh, show me or or tell me. Um, about, uh... I've had a few pupils of the arcane arts over the years. Youngsters who have shown, uh, propensity. Um, and you, while not a youngster, that little loud boom spectacle back there at the inn at Tilly's, well, you show promise. Perhaps we could learn to harness some of that. Uh, that, that, that would be great. Bunkle! Get Twizzard's room, old room, uh, made up. We're gonna have a guest. All right. You see him go off into a door in the back. What about the rest of you? Gorn, I assume you're not staying? Uh, no, Burma. I'm, I'm gonna get going. Get a... Get some coin for these skins and meat, and uh, well, and then probably we head south a little bit. I don't know. Warmer weather. Maybe go to Handar. You know, it's been a while since I've been in the capital. Yes, you always wire one to uh, enjoy the nightlife there. 
Indeed I was. And you, Lily, are you going back to your home in Wesleyville then? Well, eventually I guess. We're... Where are we heading? Oh, we're trying to find... Desert. No, we're, we're trying to... Dragon. Try to kill a dragon. You're going to try to kill a dragon? And what dragon would this be? The one that's closest to here? Snowcrest. You're going to challenge Snowcrest on the plains of Torn. Why would you do this? Because Snowcrest has something that our group needs, apparently. Snowcrest has many things that he's taken from his vanquished foes over hundreds of years. Is that what you're looking to be, a vanquished foe? Is one of them a ten foot tall skeleton? Uh, oh, an owl bear. Maybe one day. An owl bear. All right, that's respectable. And then we have a paladin. Oh. Hmm. And what deity does he follow? No, I'm if you take. Can't be that good a paladin. Most paladin I know that love their deities can't shut up about them. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Ariel, Neptune. Well, no matter. Uh, I mean, I don't think he actually prays to. You're welcome to stay here for a while before you go to your deaths. Um, oh. Perhaps if I. Train this one enough, you'll escape after minor losses. Well, maybe we can at least do some reconnaissance, scout it out. You know, there were some troubles near uh, here, the Williamson's farm. I think Bunkle was maybe finally catching on, but they had had some snow leopards that were stealing their sheep. But, uh, but that recently got cleared up, actually, by a tabaxi that was moving through the area. You don't know anyone by the name of Leafly, do you? Hmm. I think that, that Lily has this weird deja vu -y kind of thing where she's heard of Leafly before, but she can't put her finger on it. Mm. Hmm. Oh, right. Is that... Hmm. Well, regardless. Oh, yes, yes. There's also been tell, uh, tales told that a group found the cave of Thorin, of Thor and Torin, actually. The founders of this country? Some, I don't know, 1,300 years ago. Is that close by? Uh, there are some dwarves who were logging in the area. Um, and they went on some sort of an adventure. I didn't get all the details from them. But now they're talking about retiring. So whatever they found must have been worth something. I'm sure they would love to tell you about it. From what I've heard, they can't, again, shut up about it. I don't go in for much rumors and gossip. Well, there's always some truth in a rumor. The trick is finding out what's the truth and what's the tale. Yeah, that's... very good at cooking that stuff out. Interesting. It's your friend of Bard. Yes, Agnes of Sky. She does travel with Wizard, and I think they met up around Torin at some point and travel down to Wesleyville and Windbell. I've heard the name. I've heard the name before. Interesting. Well, if Twizzard is gallivanting around with famous bards and powerful fighters and overthrowing governments, well then, that suits me just fine. He's certainly making a name for himself. 
That's excellent. Well. Are there any, uh, well, this is a silly question, but at some point while we're here, I'd like to find a store that has uh, some weapons that I could look through to see if there's some red run iron weapons that might be suitable. Maybe I can upgrade them. Oh, there definitely are. There are many smiths and uh, many finely crafted weapons. Of course. Uh, you guys are presumably eating the stew while you're talking and enjoying a nice meal. Uh, at the end of that... Well, I think that... And she turns to you, Drom. You and I have some work to do. I'm ready. Well, Vinny and I can go help um, Uncle. Uncle Buffle. Oh yeah, no, he's he's coming out of the room. The room the room's already. Um. I'm I'm Gordon. Gordon pipes up. I'm probably gonna head back into town and take care of our transactions, and then I'll be I'll be seeing you folks. Uh, if you ever feel like hunting Remoraz again, you let me know. If you ever feel like hunting uh, dragons, let us know. Yeah, like the same thing. I'll think about that one, you know, I'll think about that real hard. As you're walking in the opposite direction. You got some teeth. <laughs> Maybe I, a scale or two? I wouldn't say no to a scale or two, but I don't think I'm quite willing to risk everything. But I do wish you luck. Thank you. Burma, Bunko, always a pleasure. He heads out. All right, so Drum's thinking of doing some training. Saying this out loud in front of them. <laughs> Lily and Lily and Vinny are just like <laughs> chatting in front of them. No. Well, Popcorns, <laughs> looking at everyone, talking about them. <laughs> no. I see them. This is table talk. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I need to do this. Okay. We can wait for you. Uh, okay, I mean, I could go into town afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, why don't we meet up at Tilly's for uh, dinner? Sounds good. Oh. All right. So if it's lunch now, it gives you some time for... Is it going to be like a training montage with 80s, 80s music? Oh yeah, no, classic training montage for sure. Here's my training montage music. I don't know, but uh, yeah, no. So they're at training. Uh, Lily, Vinny, you guys are heading into town. Sure. Sure. Let's go. Go check out the weapons for Vinny. Okay. Yeah, that's easy to do. Maybe see if her her ancestral um, passed down from great 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 relative scimitar can be uh, maybe buffed buffed up. Yeah. Honed. I mean, it was in the grave for a very long time. It would serve me well. Family heirloom. I stole from... The dead. The dead. <laughs> yes. 
technically mine anyway. <laughs> yeah, you guys find from the tour that Burma had given you before, uh, you one of the one of the smiths caught your eye, and you, you go back to that one, and it's run by a uh, dwarf named Gumley, and you uh, uh, Gumley Stoneheart, and you uh, show him the scimitar, and he's like, "Oh yeah, this is um, this is finely crafted, very old, very old." Hmm. He sort of like sniffs it and runs his fingers over it. And what are you what are you looking to do? Just uh, get it back into fighting shape? for as long as possible if it needs like any little bits of restoration or you know a nice good sharpening honing of course of course cool. yeah I can do that I can do that that won't be a problem and what about you elf what do you want well I kind of want to see what you guys had I heard of uh, red run weapons and iron and uh, I really wanted to come check it out see with my own eyeballs Mm. I normally use a dagger and a short sword, so if I had to find something better than what I've got, or even just similar to what I've got, but fancier, since I'm a fancy elf, maybe that might be nice. Uh, he sort of shows you, there's a, uh, a rack of swords uh, over to one side, and then there's also a display case of various daggers. Um, is there anything in particular that you're looking for? Is there a way to get a red run weapon that is silvered so that it could be used against magical creatures? What's the silver do? The silver makes it so that your strikes will watch it. Like hit it? No, but not for all that's worth. I think they do. If you're going against the dragon, you might want some silvered weapons. Hmm. Is that a thing they make at this smithy? Oh yeah, you can do that. I mean, sometimes it's just inlaying it with silver or dipping it in silver. It doesn't have to be the entire thing. It's imbuing it with some, some arcane energy as well, yeah. All right, you look through the, you look through the rack. Um, give me a. Uh, Do you want to parry a little bit? See how it feels. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. You can do that. Some non-damaging fighting. Well, the way I fight, uh, you stand here. I'm gonna hide behind this barrel. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Everything's a sneak attack. And you walk towards the barrel. I mean, this is how Lily learned how to fight. True. Um, yeah, you 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 find one. There are various uh, decorations, inlays in uh, the the hilts of the swords, and sometimes uh, along the blades they'll be sort of uh, decorative. And you find a short sword um, that, uh, let's see, what, is it, what does it have on it? It has a, uh, a stag's head, sort of like, whereas the, uh, the antlers go into the, uh, I believe it's the pummel, the cross piece. Um, and um, it has a fine uh, inlay of silver, not on the very edge because that would dull, but sort of going up both sides and meeting at the top and it curls around and makes almost a crown over the stag's head. That, Ooh, one, that's very fancy. that one calls out to you. Ah, I see you, uh, you have a good eye there. It is, uh, it is a powerful blade. But uh, I could part with it for the right price. 
course. Yeah, you have yeah. to do some moves with it. Do I feel like when Harry Potter picked up the third one in Ollivander? <laughs> the third one? <laughs> yeah, your your hair starts to blow back. And... <laughs> yeah, no, it it feels really good. Feels really good in the hand. Good heft. It's a uh, it's it's a little it's a little longer than some of the other swords there that are more for dwarf size. So this is, this feels like it's more your size than some of those. At its core, yes. Perfect. How much for this one here? I could part with it for four hundred. Nice weapon, it's silver. Probably will give you a little plus something because it's silver. I know uh, I know dwarves like to haggle. I don't say that out loud. Three eighty. Three eighty. Three ninety. Three eighty five. Final offer. Three eighty five. Yeah. Hold out a hand. That was so terrible. You probably could have got it for three fifty if you started at three hundred. I thought of going lower, but I didn't think that was gonna work. I thought I'd just anger the dwarf. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that is a plus one short sword. It sure does. So just you, you have to go in and actually change your short sword to a short sword. Yeah, you should be able to. Oh, his three thousand gold is now going to like. <laughs> three thousand gold. <laughs> it's three thousand two hundred fifty is now twenty eight fifty. Wait, where did you guys get so much? We filled our pants from the dragon horde. No, that's the oh, other yeah. group. Vinny, Vinny was it was this group originally with Agnes. Oh, you're right. The first, the first dragon horde. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Amazing. But yet, Agnes and Lily have like no money whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in this moment, Agnes does have a lot of money, though, right? She Agnes does. Now because they just came back from the Dragon Horde, but yeah. the first time around, she picked up a box that has, like, Vinny's ancestral gemstones in it. Hmm. I don't think she's told him that, because she doesn't know. But it has a crest on it that is very similar to Vinny's family crest. All right, how much does uh, Lily owe for the honing and restoration? Oh, uh, not much, like three gold. Yeah, I can afford that. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably, well, to, yeah, I guess you would, you would pick it up the next day probably. That's okay. But I, I pay standing. for it. Yeah, no, he appreciates that. Yeah, where else do you, you guys want to do anything else? Or should we, we could flash over to draw them real quick? Yeah, man. Yeah, so um, first she sort of puts you through some paces to see what you can do already, draw them. So like, she shows she shows you some, some simpler cantrips that she can do. 
And then she asks to see what you can do. Uh, You're sort of like out in the yard of her house. Okay. What would you like to do? I'm going to cast a uh, fireball, third level. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there somewhere? Is there somewhere where I can do this? I'm also gonna, um, I'm gonna, uh, what should we call it? Uh, transmute it, um, and I want it to uh, do um, what should we call it? Um, cold damage. Because ostensibly it's already cold here, right? Yeah. Wait. So your your fireball can do cold damage? Well, I'm gonna use meta magic to transmute it. That's awesome. Does it? How does it? What does it look like when you do that? Well, I don't know, but I can change it to acid, cold. It is fire, lightning, which would look pretty cool. Uh, poison or thunder. Which I don't know what thunder would look like. But maybe just like a wave of. Yeah. But I don't know. Is, is it? Am I like Mr. Freeze from like The Incredibles or whatever? Or Frozone. Sorry. Mr. Frozen. Freeze. Yeah. No. There's there's a bit of a little bluff over on the side of the yard, and you sort of, you let it fly over there, and maybe it's instead of like. Instead of the red hot flame, it's like a mix of like blue flame and snow, and everything around it is frozen. Whoa, that is something new. And you say you're self-taught. Yes. Hmm. Have you ever seen one of these? And she sort of reaches in and pulls out a spell scroll and shows you it. Uh. I mean, I've seen, yes, I, I've seen, like, paper. Um, Can you read the runes on this sheet? No. I also, hmm. I have, I have a, that leather tube, I have that tube. With, the leather tube with twine, that, when did I get that? I got it a while ago, but I you don't know that I ever. Sword. Yeah, that's it. But I don't know that I ever saw what it was. I don't know if now's a moment where I would be like, I have something kind of like that. Yeah, I mean, it should, probably would be. Okay. You're, you're going to need to refresh my memory, though. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, Aaron, you're right. It was like when we were in the Dragon's Word, it's just one of the things I picked up. It was a leather tube with twine. And I don't oh. think, Aaron, you remember stuff better than I do. But I don't think we ever investigated what it was. I just, No, I think we were trying to get out... Yeah. We were, we were very quick at, at looting. Yeah. This is the and first time you were in the Black Dragon's Horde. Yeah. And, and I didn't I didn't tell you to write down anything other than a tube with twine? I don't think so. I mean, Jerome doesn't oh, read, so I don't know that he would have um, Yeah, fair enough. But... Oh, what the heck did I want that to be? I'm scrolling back. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, this is close. The Sinking Gull. Draw and Sir Pen get introduced to Liar's Dice. Was that after? That must have been after, right? Uh, that might have been when we got separated from the in the ethereal plane, or the astral plane. Yeah, astral plane. Where Vinny and I got put to Dessen, and they were transported to Swabia. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm going to need to do some research to figure out what the heck that thing is. Okay. Maybe I just don't remember about it right now. Yeah, maybe you just don't remember about it right now. Or there's some kind of magic holding it shut. Yeah, yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll do that some other day. I mean, I could come up with something else, but like, kind of curious to what I wanted it to be. <laughs> Lillian 
intimidates one guard. A village of lizard folk. All right. So yeah, so some kind of training montage continues, um, probably even into the evening. Um, she would, she would teach you some of the arcane runes that are on. So, so she, she sort of brings you back into the house. She shows you some of the spell scrolls and her spell book that she's filled through her life. Um, and she takes quite a shining to you, Drum. Takes you under her wing, so to speak. Um, and explains that you've got, you've got a, you've got a natural ability, but we need to, you need to understand how to harness your arcane uh, abilities to, to really understand them. Do you find that sometimes things happen that perhaps you weren't expecting. In life, all the time. <laughs> Specifically with your arcane powers. Sometimes, sometimes yes. I'll do one thing, and sometimes that thing will happen. But then, like another thing will happen. Yes, yes. Now that makes sense. All right. You need more structure in your life, young man. And I can provide it. Sounds good. All right, so she starts. She starts teaching you some of the finer points. Did it give uh, a girdle? And she's like, try this one on. <laughs> Structure. Yeah. Did it with Um. Okay. Vinny and Lily, uh, still hanging out in the town. Uh, I mean, you guys could go. You could go. You could go anywhere. Where would you like to go? Oh yeah. Um, no, you survived trips through the mountains. You're good. I'm not sure if Lily needs to replace any of her um, like sketching materials because she's been trying to like make maps. So I don't know where she is on her supplies for that. Hmm. You can certainly find that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. Where would you like to start investigating? I feel like we should start at Billy's. All right. Well, that's where we started, yeah. All right, you guys head back to the tavern. And uh yeah, you uh you meet Tilly. She's a uh She's a dwarf. She's got this uh, sort of a helm made of some. It's an interesting. It, it it looks like it's a it's a an alloy of some sort. It has a white glint to it, and she's wearing a helm made of it, uh, even though she's like inside her own inn. Uh, but she's very cheerful. I saw you folks in here a little bit before, and uh, and then you left with with old Burma there. But uh, welcome, welcome back. Can I get you anything to eat or drink? Oh, of course, yes, yes. We're known all throughout Torin for the cold beard. Oh. Would you like a cold beard? I think I think we'll get one for each of us, maybe. We're going to come back here for dinner. We'll get one each, and then um, if you wouldn't mind, we 
I'd like to pick your brain a little bit. Sure. Let me get those cold beards and we'll uh, we'll shoot the breeze a bit. So she goes and she rudges behind the bar and you hear some pouring and she comes out with two modest looking uh, mugs and it has a uh, liquid. You can't quite tell what color it is, uh, but she puts it down in front of you. There you go. Two cold beards. I chug it immediately. All right. Uh, this sort of blast of mint uh, hits you and uh, your long elven hair immediately freezes into into it like like just like you've been out in a blizzard for a while oh are you breaking off your hair my hair is frozen well that that is what happens hmm. why is it called beard my hair freezes <laughs> well it would it would freeze your beard too actually you know that's interesting your mustache didn't freeze That's very peculiar. I wonder if the potency of this batch isn't quite what I'm used to. Yeah, I think I got a weak one. Are you going to drink yours? She points yeah, at Lily. But, uh, yeah, I am. So I drink mine. I don't chug it, but you know, I take I take a, a, a decent sized sip of it. Yeah, it's also it's it. There's some sort of it's like a it's like a beer mixed with a mint liqueur. It's not like the best thing, but as soon as you drink it, all your hair freezes. Well, eh. must have been a fluke. Anyway, what uh, what are you folks curious about? What brings you to Red Run? Uh, so Aunt Burma mentioned um, some interesting like, things that might be going around, and uh, I happen to be into figuring, finding out the history of the different areas because I want to be almost like a diplomat and I want to be very familiar with the customs and the histories of the different lands of Centralia. All right. So there was something about a, a tomb that was recently found. I would love to maybe talk with the people who found it or visit it myself so I can maybe, you know, get the feel for it. Maybe, you know, do a little research or investigate myself, collect information. Yeah, no, it's the darndest thing. Um, there were, um, there's a group of dwarves, um, headed up by, uh, what was his name? What was his name? Eh, probably doesn't matter that much. Maybe Big, Big Jim, Big, Big Tim? No, I think it was Big Jim. Not very big. I think he kind of used that as a little bit of a crutch. But, uh, but yeah, no, he, he led a group that was doing some logging. Uh, maybe about, oh, I don't know, a days or so hike from here. Um, but the darndest thing, they came back about a week ago and uh, they said they were done. They were retiring. That sort of caused a little bit of a stir. We were like, what do you mean retiring? And they had a... Uh, they had a lot of coinage, ancient coinage, by the looks of it. And, uh, yeah, they said they'd gotten it from a tomb of some kind. Now, of course, there are rumors that the, uh, the final resting place of the, of the, uh, the founders of our great country, Torin and Thor, Friends, best of friends, if the uh, legends be true, uh, were uh, they made their final resting place somewhere in this area. One of them, uh, Thor, was a, a lover of animals and um, had gathered beasts from all over Torin and, uh, and brought them here. But, uh, you know, I didn't honestly believe it at the time, uh, and I honestly, I wouldn't have believed it at all if it wasn't for, well, the amount of coin in their pocket and the, uh, it's a certain, 
gravity, a certain weight to coin that's been around for centuries. Actually, you know what? I think I have. And she goes behind the bar. She comes out with the gold. She's like, here you go. Take a look. I'll trade you for a newer one if you want. Oh, certainly. Um, I think that Lily is still going to maybe take a rubbing of it. Sure. Just so she can have it in paper form as well as in the coin form. Yeah. No, when you, when you uh, compare the modern gold with coin to the gold coin in your hand, you do see subtle differences. Um, and the markings on it. Yeah, in theory, they'd be like, it's interesting. The whole, like, same coinage throughout Centralia. Anyway, yeah, it definitely seems definitely seems different in some hard to place way. Well, if you want to learn more about the tomb, you'd have to find Big Jim and his cronies. Or associates, friends. I don't know. From what I've heard, he's a, he's a bit of a jerk. Here's a question for you. Speaking of jerk, have you heard of this white dragon named Snowcrest? I mean, we've all heard of Snowcrest. Not, uh... Not many of us have seen Snowcrest, if at all, but we've heard tales of groups going missing, whether they're out hunting mammoth or yeti or remoraz, and well, they just never come back. But to be honest, I don't know if I've heard any tales of that. I don't know, probably in the last 50, 60 years. I don't, uh, I don't really leave Red Run much at all. Sometimes I'll go to Handar if the occasion warrants it, pay my respects to the king, but uh, usually I just like to stay here and run the inn. It's like a nice town. I don't blame you. It is. All right. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for the northern hair. <laughs> <laughs> It should wear off soon. It only lasts uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Guess you're prepared for the cold wind when you go outside. Mm. All right. <laughs> the, uh... Uh, you guys have been walking around, exploring, having a drink. Uh, the sun's setting a little earlier than you're used to. Uh, you make your way back out to Burma's house, Uncle and Burma's house. Uh, as you get there, you see Drom outside with Burma again, doing some some rigorous mental and arcane exercises in the yard. Just concluding their training montage. Um, as you're welcome to have dinner there tonight, if you want, or you could go back to the inn. Burma extends the invitation. Oh, I forgot to ask. Uh, I'm assuming Tilly is about her helm. Uh, oh, we'll Maybe uh -huh. Aunt Burma knows about it. I'm good with dinner here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Sounds good. Alright. What's that? Uh, Drom, did you learn anything new? I, I learned what spell scrolls do. Handful of characters. Yeah. Alright. 
You guys enjoy a wonderful evening meal at the house. You probably should have told your pen what we were doing, but yeah. Oh, he's in town somewhere. Lily is a little is a little <laughs> jealous right now that Sir Penn is spending all this time with <laughs> Ostrid and like she's trying to get in good with Ostrid you know like so she's a little peeved right now and you can't talk to animals and so she's like fine I'm not gonna tell Sir Penn that we're having this wonderful meal with <laughs> <laughs> oh man total, total teenage like I love it. Um, so in the coming days, I think we, I think, I think, I think Drum continues to train with Burma if he's up for it. The question yeah, is, like little, like day, like day um, quests so that we always come back to Redwood. Okay. Yeah, Red One, yeah. Red yeah, if you guys are going to be searching for Big Jim. Yeah. And his, his band of retired dwarves. Um, yeah, why don't you, uh, give me a, give me a D20. Let's just roll a D20 for this next day. Like one of us, each of us? Oh, uh, I think the the Vinny and Lily duo. I see. Oh, oh are we going without drum? Or, oh boy, Whoa. that's got a nat twenty. Nat twenty. Yeah. I don't know, drum. Would you want to go with them? I I would, but I would feel like I would rather train. I feel like this is like my whole. This is like something this is that. This purpose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if we find anything awesome, we'll bring everyone, you know. Okay. But we'll just, we'll do the legwork. Sounds good. All right, so the next day, uh, you go off, uh, and you, you head toward the Williamson's farm, because you've, you've heard that name. And, uh, and they seem like a very nice couple. And they tell you how they used to have a sh problem with their sheep disappearing. And that's all been fixed. Now, there is a tabaxi who could talk to the snow leopards, apparently. Um, and they confirm that uh, the tabaxi also mentioned Big Jim and his dwarves. And uh, a tomb of some kind, though they didn't really fully understand. Uh, though they did say that the tabaxi was with a bunch of animals, um, two cats, two dogs, uh, and two rabbits. Um, uh, when when the tabaxi returned from their travels, um, so you continue sort of searching through the forest. There's a little. You know, there's some outposts here and there, uh, people who go on hunting expeditions. Um, and later that day, you come across a, a trail that you would follow and you get to a camp, uh, sort of set up in the woods. Uh, and there are a bunch of dwarves uh, who seem to be uh, a bit drunk, sort of carousing around uh, near a fire. And you approach them. What would you like to say? Dwarves. What's happening? And one of them has his shirt off. <laughs> oh. Ah! Ah! Join us! Join us! Join us in our party, in our revelry. Never having to work again in a day in our lives. Whoa, must be nice. How is that the case? Nah, we're rich. Are you from old money or new money? Ha <laughs> ha, both. Oh, okay, explain this. Well, 
We, uh... Oof, we met a very smart, smart young woman who, uh, we showed... Well, we showed a magical cave. She solved some riddles. A bunch of animals came to life, and we ended up rich! Yep, can't complain. What cave would this be that is magical? I mean, isn't a cave just a cave? Oh, no, 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 no. I think uh, ancient would be the word I'd use to describe it. Isn't that right, boys? Yeah, ancient. Yeah, it was old. We almost died. Well, you know, not really. But uh, she almost died. Almost got locked in. I got locked in with her. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I didn't get locked in. I wasn't about to go through that door. <laughs> oh, I am so intrigued. Oh, yeah. No, it's quite the story. Are all the riches gone? Or are there more? Oh, the riches in the cave? Yeah. Well, those are ours now. Oh, you took them all. I mean, she got her share. Could you at least show us this cave? We can tell you how to get there. Anybody want to go back? One guy's like, I'd go back. The guy without the shirt. There could be a little alcove that you missed. Alright, if Jonesy wants to take you, he can take you. Yeah, I'll take you. Thanks, Jonesy. When do you, when do you want to go? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sleep soon. Uh, probably going to be here tomorrow. We got a nice camp. You look around; it's like a mediocre camp. Okay. Well, if we come back here tomorrow at, let's say, uh, I know. Well, how far is it from here? How long will it take? If you went straight there, you could, you know, probably just take you a couple hours to get back. Yeah, that that uh that works for me. The cave itself is probably another half a day's hike from here. Not that bad. I mean, that sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, how far away are we from Camp Burma's house? <laughs> like, is it just worth just sleeping there in their nice camp? Good. Yeah, that's fine. You guys mind if we share your fire? Heck no! Make yourselves comfortable. We're having a... Uh, having mutton. Lots of mutton. If it isn't mutton today, mutton tomorrow. Um, I would play a song, but someone stole my Z-Tone. Oh. Stole your what? <laughs> your Vuvuzela? Yeah. Sneak horn. Making a new one. Um, see, are there any any stories? Oh, we we were um, hunting Ramaraz with uh, Gorn. Ah, that guy's still alive. Yeah, almost didn't make it this last time around. We had both a, a baby and an adult. Whoa, you guys must be pretty tough. We had more to our group. Yeah, we had a few more people. So. Once upon a time, I went on a hunt with him. Never again. Too dangerous. It definitely was dangerous. First one. Hmm. And we got some sweet tea. Well, no, we didn't. Not really. We only got it from the, the young one. The adult one, we had to essentially acid its whole entire mouth. So it would stop biting us. Acid of mouth. Hey, you know, sometimes you just got acid of mouth. I get it. Hmm. Well, I'm getting tired. 
you look around and you see them all a little sort of happily happily contented with their meal and their drink they start to fall asleep one by one in the little sort of makeshift shelters that they've built <laughs> Alright, Vinny uh, makes himself comfortable in one of the shelters and wraps himself in his cloak. Uh, Drone, can you roll a d20 for me? I sure can. See how your training went for the day. Pretty 16. Pretty 16. That's what I like to hear. Yep. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, you guys spend the night at Big Jim's Dwarf Camp. And the next morning, you go off with Jonesy. Having the benefits of a full rest. Well, we're waiting for drum for that one. Well, we're doing the leg work. If okay. there's nothing there, then there's no point in anyone being there with us. Okay. If there's something there, then we can always retreat. Okay. We know the location. All right, so we're off with Jonesy. All right. Yeah, he's a bit of a character. He's got bright orange hair. Doesn't wear a shirt. And uh, he's quite cheerful though leads you through the uh actually what's the weather like yeah, the weather's pretty good a little overcast and uh you know you head deeper into the forest it looks like uh as you go up in elevation a bit there's a little bit more snow on the ground um and maybe around three or four that day, you come out of the forest and in front of you uh, is a bit of a hill. Um, and there is a path that looks relatively recently used. He leads you up to there and then in front of you, there is a cave. And the edge of the cave might be a little too perfect. It looks like it might have been carved out of the rock. And he's like, yep, there it is. That's where we got the treasure. That's where all the animals came to life. Mm. So when these animals came to life, what were they before then? Oh, they were stone. They were stone. Did they look like animals? Oh, yeah. No, they looked like finely starved finely carved stone animals, but then that uh, that tabaxi, Leafly, I think? Yeah, Leafly. 
She lit these braziers, and uh, all the animals came to life, made friends with her. She took them all, most of them. Now, uh, there's a bat or two that flew away. Oh, and the spiders. Yeah, the spiders didn't stay with her. Yeah, deeper, farther in there. There's a door inside. There's a... Well, that's where they found the treasure. But uh, there's some runes on the ground. And if you step on the runes and the door closes behind you. So, you know, you get locked in there forever, I guess. I don't know. Leafly figured it out. She was quite bright. Okay. So that should be good for 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to go in there. You guys are welcome to, though. Okay. And then I'm also going to, I guess, light up with a cantrip so that I can see into this cave. All right, what are you lighting up? Are you casting light? Yeah, I'm going to cast light. Do you see anything downstairs, Julian? Maybe... Maybe my new scimitar? Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, you would have you would have gotten it back, so you're, you're freshly honed scimitar. Sharper than ever before. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys head into the cave. All uh, right. All right, you guys head into the cave. Uh, the scimitar lighting things up. Uh, Vinny's elven eyes also uh, casting around the shadows. Uh, and you notice that there are uh, sort of pillars on each side going back. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, but they're all empty. Um, the arch of one pillar goes up and over for each one. And in the center, there is a uh, metal brazier hanging down from the ceiling. Um, all of them currently off. Uh, you head deeper into the tunnel and you get to the back. And there is a rune-carved door uh, that stands ajar. Okay, so this is where we don't want to pass that door in case we get stuck in there. So if we look at the floor outside, where mm. we currently are, yes. is there anything on the floor there? No. But the floor inside seems to be covered in runes. Hmm. The floor inside ruins match or have any that match the runes on the door? Uh, the ones on the floor seem to be arcane in nature, and the ones on the door seems to be... Uh, actually, what languages do you guys speak? Oh, I don't think I speak anything. Common, dwarvish, halfling, and sylvan. They're dwarvish runes. Yeah. I can read Dwarvish or speak Dwarvish. I don't know if I can read it. Yeah, languages. You can read and speak the languages that you know. Oh, okay. Oh, they're in Dwarvish. Okay. So Dwarvish runes are on the door. Hmm. And then the runes inside of the room are arcane. Yes. Okay. So then can we at least translate what's on the door? Uh, it seems to be random letters, but... You guys, uh, actually, there's something very familiar about this door. The, 
does it remind us of one that had a stone golem in there before? It does. That's why I was thinking, ding, 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 tablet. Yep. Yep, it reminds you of that. So, if they went in there and they took all of the treasures, they might have taken the tablet with them. If I was to look through the door without actually stepping in, yeah. would I be able to detect magic any other magical item? Like yeah, actually, so, so, let's see, so actually you should, there would be, there would be a latent enchantment aura on the braziers as you walk through the beginning tunnel. Um, and as you look inside, you see two larger pedestals, and you see uh, two, um, armored skeletons uh, standing in the back of the room um, and another uh, brazier connecting the two empty pedestals the two larger empty pedestals so maybe they didn't like these last two and that's why those two armored skeletons are still there and if they didn't like them, then maybe what the skeletons are technically guarding is still here. I mean, maybe the tablet is here and it's not with the snow crab. It's possible. Hmm. Do you want to try and find it? Well, I think we should have the whole group yeah. do that. And maybe we could see about where Leafly went. Okay. If Leafly would want to join us again, have a special meetup or something. So now we can put out word. Uh, okay. We know someone who could speak to animals, so maybe the word can go around through the animals to find weekly. Cool. <laughs> the squirrel telephone network. Okay, so, so we won't do anything here yet. We'll, no. We'll go back and we'll tell John. Mm -hmm. okay. We can ask more questions to the group of guys saying like, oh, did you ever light the braziers inside of the, we can ask the more room? Questions. Did you ever find anything that looked roughly like, and I could draw a picture of it, because I know what the one that we have looks like. Yep. Okay. So that's what that's what we can do in the meantime, waiting for our other uh, group members to be ready for this adventure. Okay. All right, you guys head back out. Um, Jonesy waited there for you, and he's like, hey, you're not dead. You're not trapped. Pretty good yeah. job. Oh, um, I think that's where the horses came from. Yeah, the horses were from that from that one, but the uh, the skeletons they never did anything. I don't know. Leafly said we got luckier. She talked about something, and I, I can't remember exactly what. But they never attacked anyone. They just sort of stood there. But we didn't really want to fight them anyway, so we were fine with that. Oh, I think she uh, she set sail down the river with uh, Allender. She said she was from Tulu. But all right. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I take out one of my papers and I sketch what looks roughly like a tablet and I said did you find anything that looked like this? Mm, no 
Not that I remember, no. Would, uh, would you maybe have taken different items? Like, maybe you didn't see what your friends got versus they didn't see what you got when you divvied it all up? No, it was primarily just coins. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we could ask Big Jim. It's yeah. got a lot of history to it, and I'm trying to find out the history. So if I could find this, you know, essentially it's like a tablet. It's got a lot of, like, the history, and I figured if this was a tomb, shouldn't that have some history? Yeah, no, sure, that makes sense. All right. I don't know. I'm not much one for history myself, but we can ask Big Jim when we get back. Sounds good. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. Head back with him. It's pretty dark by the time you get back to Big Jim's. Um, Lily will spend some of the evening drawing a map of the area, how they got from the camp in Red Warren to the cave. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, you guys stay there the night again? Yeah, we can always head back to Red Run or Burmans the next day. We can ask Big Jim around the fire. <laughs> All right. Um, wait, what did you want to ask him? Oh, about the tablet? He doesn't recognize it. I don't know. I don't, no, I don't. I don't think I would have cared much about it if I had seen it, to be honest. But uh, I don't remember seeing anything like that. Good to know. All right, still out there. You guys want some more drink? Nah, I'm no, good. we're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So the next day, you would go back to the Burmas. Sure. All right. All right, I think that is where, yeah, you meet up with Drum again. He's got some new tricks to show you. Ooh, hey, Drum. Hey, guys. Watch <laughs> this. And, uh... And that's where we'll end for the night. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll 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 get into cool and we'll uh, we'll explore an ancient tomb next time. Sounds pretty good. Cool. All right. Thank you all for playing. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time on B and D Live.